Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's get started. This first question comes from a young man named Emilio Andres. He's seven years old and he lives in San Antonio, Texas. I had the opportunity to meet Emilio and his family this past Saturday, which would have been two days ago, and uh, I really enjoyed meeting him. Uh, his dad writes and says, we really enjoyed your presentation at the Witty on Saturday. Our son was looking forward to meeting you all week. He is constantly watching the Ultimate Dinosaur series and the Jurassic Fight Club series. He wants to be a paleontologist when he grows up. Here is his question. Emilio says, did T-Rex eat anything that lived in water, like from lakes and rivers? Regards, Emilio's dad. Well, first of all, dad, I appreciate you taking the time out to help Emilio write his question. I enjoyed meeting you and the family. And Emilio, I think you're going to make a great paleontologist. If you decide you want to continue to study, you let me know and perhaps I can give you your first job. By the way, I was very impressed that you knew about ceratopsians. Very impressed. All right, uh, your question, Emilio, this is interesting. When we decide what animals eat, uh, prehistoric animals that is, we look at the way they're built and we look at the kind of weapons they have. Well, to catch something that lives in a river or a lake or a stream, usually you gotta have weapons that are designed to catch slippery things because most of the things that live in the water are pretty slippery. Uh, bears are great hunters in the water because they've got the long claws that allow them to grab those slippery things. In dinosaurs, um, Spinosaurus, Baryonyx, Suchomimus, um, maybe even Megaraptor, those dinosaurs seem to be very effective at hunting in waters and streams and rivers. But when it comes to Tyrannosaurus rex, he's just n not really made that way. He doesn't seem to be very well suited for grabbing things that live in the water. Now, if he was walking along the shoreline and he found something that washed up, then absolutely I think he would have eaten it. But I don't necessarily think he's really the best guy for going out there and catching things that live in the water. That's probably not how he made his living. But I think that's a very interesting question. I'm glad you wrote to me. And again, I enjoyed meeting you and your family. And I look forward to working with you in the future. All right, Sean M. Sean M. from Belfast, Ireland says, I don't understand the hypothesis that Stigimoloch, Dracorex, and Pachycephalosaurus are the same dinosaurs. Can you explain? Sean, your timing could not be any better. I had the great honor of being contacted by, by, by Brian Buckmeyer, uh, Buckmeyer from Sioux City, Iowa. Now, Brian is the man who found Dracorex. And by the way, just to let you guys know, this man donated that to the Indianapolis Children's Museum, an incredibly honorable thing to do. And that demonstrates somebody who's interested in helping the science of paleontology. Very proud uh, of what Brian did. And Brian, very nice to hear from you. Um, Brian is the guy who found Dracorex. And he wrote to me and just mentioned, hey, by the way, I watch your videos and I'm the one that found Dracorex. And he was a little disappointed that so much publicity was given to this notion that Dracorex is simply a juvenile and would ultimately turn into the dinosaur we know of as Pachycephalosaurus. Well, I've got a Pachycephalosaurus and I'll tell you something. When you look at this dinosaur and then you compare it to Dracorex, I really don't understand how anybody could hypothesize that Dracorex would turn into Pachycephalosaurus. When you look at Pachycephalosaurus, this is a distinctively different dinosaur. Yes, he has similarities. Yes, he's from the same family, but th the idea that Dracorex would morph into this to me just doesn't have a lot of credibility. Now, there's a tremendous amount of paleontologists who agree with me that that doesn't seem to make sense. Um, the idea that one animal morphs into another, that is a very rare occurrence in the animal kingdom with the exception of amphibians and insects and then fish. But those animals really have practically no relationship to dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are more, more closely related to birds and, in, and uh, reptiles. Well, when you look at those animal kingdoms, you don't see anything like that. You don't see animals who morph into something different as they mature. A baby cobra looks just like an adult cobra. Baby lizards look like adult lizards. Baby birds look like adult birds. Yes, they do have changes, but those changes are not skeletal. Those changes in some cases are nearly ornamental. When you look at Pachycephalosaurus, this giant dome, it is hard to imagine that you start off uh, being young and then this thing suddenly morphs. 
or that the horns on his nose suddenly change position or the horns on back of the skull basically not only change position on the skull, but they grow in numbers and they change in, in shape and design and configuration. Yes, it's clear to me that Pachycephalosaurus and Stigmaloc and, um, uh, and Draco Rex are related, but to me, it doesn't make any scientific sense to believe that they are all the same animal and they just represent different growth stages. By the way, speaking about Draco Rex, Brian has an incredible website. It is thedracorex.com. Uh, if you get a chance, go to that website. There's a really interesting video there with people like uh, Pete Larson and uh, Dr. Robert Bacher and I believe Dr. Phil Curry. You can see their reaction to looking at Draco Rex. It's really pretty cool. So for any of you that are interested in that, uh, that to me is a great opportunity to be able to really see the differences I'm talking about. All right, Jordan M. from Cookville, Tennessee. Hello, DG. I was wondering what was the difference between Brachiosaurus and Giraffe Titan and the difference between woolly mammoths and American mastodons. Thanks for answering my question. Well, Jordan, great question. Let me say this up front. I don't know enough about Giraffe Titan to tell you whether or not it and Brachiosaurus are the same animal. I have read a number of instances where people have uh, contemplated that they may be one and the same. Um, so I just don't know. I, I truly cannot answer that. Now, when it comes to mastodons and mammoths, well, there's clearly differences between the two. The two differences mostly, the most recognizable, is just simply look at their body design. Mastodons are a little more compact body. Ma uh, mammoths are a little more elongated. Mammoths have a different um, tusk configuration. But if you look inside the mouth, you see the number one biggest difference, and that is the tooth uh, design. Mammoth teeth are very flat and very easily recognized. Mastodon teeth are more bumpy. The difference, we believe, is that they had a different diet. Mastodons appear to spend more time eating things like twigs and leaves. Mammoths appear to have the tooth design that's better suited for eating grasses. So they had two different diets. They lived at the same time in the same place, but they had two different dietary habits. And that's what allows two gigantic animals to share the same environment. Um, they eat different things. All right, Ryan C., uh, my buddy Dinosaur Ryan from Nottingham, England. He says, hey, George, I've been making videos about the topic of dinosaurs, and a paleontologist noticed my work and emailed me asking if paleontology is something that I would like to do as a career. I would love to, but is it a career with many benefits and something in which people can make a living? I wrote this to help others who might be in the same position and hope to hear from you soon. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Dinosaur Ryan, I've seen your videos. I like them very much. I think they're very well done. Um, paleontology is a tricky science because you can't always find people who make an incredible living at it. There's a big jet flying over me right now, so it may drown out what I'm saying. But let me say this to you. Um, if you want to do something that you love and you love paleontology, then in all honesty, uh, benefits and pay basically become secondary. Before I started doing what I do now, I used to work in the retail industry as an executive and I made a lot of money, a lot of money. And I will tell you the truth, today I make about a quarter of what I used to make back then. And yet I wouldn't change anything in the world for what I do because what I do I love to do. I get up in the morning and I love getting up and going to work. I enjoy doing it. So if you want to uh, make paleontology a career, my advice to you would be don't go in expecting that this is going to be a high paying job with incredible benefits. But what you can expect is that if you love paleontology and the study of prehistoric life, then there's absolutely nothing more uh, fulfilling and enjoyable than having a job that you love. All right, finally, Fernando P from Almada. Portugal, Almada or Almeida, I'm not sure how you guys pronounce it. He says, good day, Dinosaur George. One of my favorite prehistoric animals is Sinonathus. And I was very angry that they didn't show Sinonathus in Walking with Monsters. I've read in several websites that this animal was a pack hunter. What evidence is there to support this? Best regards, Fernando. Fernando, very good to hear from you. There's no direct evidence I'm aware of that would suggest they hunted in packs, but because of their body design and because of their size and because of the things that lived around them, they were around in the early Triassic, I think, there were some bigger animals. It makes sense that these animals were probably uh, pack hunters, but there's no absolute direct evidence that I'm aware of to prove that. But my best guess would be they probably did simply because 
hunting in packs allows you the opportunity to be more effective and to bring down larger prey. All right, you guys, it was great hearing from you all. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, click on uh, my Facebook page and my Twitter page and follow me on both. Until next time, it's great hearing from you all. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. And for you young people out there, always make sure to practice your reading and everybody practice your manners because good manners makes the world a much better place. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.